Hey guys, welcome to another Walk-In Wednesday. This is pretty exciting stuff right here. I decided to do this video today because we hardly ever see one drilling come in the office. And uh, just over the past month, I've had three of them come into the office. And I wanna go over the Luftwaffe drilling, also known as the survival weapon, also known as the M30. Uh, we'll talk about the detail in a minute, but let me just give you an overview. This one just came in the door, which is why I decided to do the video of all three. This one uh, I got from the family of the vet who brought it back, and I'll talk a little bit about that. And this one, uh, this little piggy, uh, this one was uh, supposedly found in a shot down aircraft. So we're gonna take a look at all three of these in a little bit more detail and tell you the story of the Luftwaffe drilling. Okay, so let's start with the story of this amazing weapon. Um, first of all, it was probably the most useless military contract in history. I bought my first drilling probably about 15 years ago, and the story was always it's a survival weapon, which meant that when a pilot was shot down or an airplane was shot down, there would be one of these in every airplane. Now, they only ordered 4,000, so that, that doesn't make sense. They ordered 4,000 of these originally, um, there was supposed to be one in air, airplanes, and uh, generally they went to North Africa. Later, they, of course, they were issued to Europe, um, the, the Luftwaffe bases. But in North Africa, these were supposed to help you survive if you're shot down. Well, that story always left me scratching my head. I just never kind of grasped why you would need such a beautiful shotgun <laughs> with case hardening and a uh, special stamping that I'll show you. It's just a beautiful piece of equipment. Why in the world would you want a, a, a Luftwaffe drilling if you're shot down? Most people that were shot down, the plane crashed, you died, and the equipment was all destroyed. Or, second option, is you get shot and you, you parachute out, you're certainly not gonna grab this. So the third option is you're shot down behind enemy lines and what's the one thing that you want to do when you get shot down behind enemy lines? You're going to want to get back to your, your own lines. And if you're in North Africa, you're concerned about water and getting out of there as quickly as you can. Why in the world, this is heavy by the way, why in the world would you grab this suitcase and carry it with you maybe 30, 40 miles back to your home base? That story never made sense to me. Let's add to the fact that as a pilot, you're also carrying a, a handgun. A lot of these were the, um, the 30,000 uh, Luftwaffe uh, femurus were issued. The tropical holster in North Africa is very popular. Uh, we have a picture of one here. So uh, the, the femuru comes with a tropical holster. 30,000 of them were issued to the Luftwaffe pilots, so they're carrying that. Also, Krigoff made Lugers for pilots, and then later in the war, P-38s were issued to pilots. So we see pilots carrying all kinds of weapons, but most notably, they have a sidearm. So you already have a sidearm. <laughs> Why do you need a drilling? So I, I, like I said, I never, I never bought the story of this being a survival weapon. Drilling dry means three. So there's three, you can see the three, two shotgun. Uh, barrels and a rifle barrel. Here's the bullet which could take down any game animal in Africa. It also came with bird pellets and a, uh, a, a, a plug. Um, three, you can see here listed, it came with three kinds of ammo. Most of the collectors, my, my suspicions were viewed by a lot of the uh, collectors on the forums all saying the, the story of the Luftwaffe uh, survival weapon doesn't make any sense. So then I was at a gun show and everybody's sitting around saying, what do you think that was used for? And somebody said, well, I know the American pilots used to train on how to shoot down aircraft by shooting skeet on their day off or the, when they were uh, not, not out flying a mission. They would shoot skeet because it would train you to lead the skeet and, and how to shoot, down, uh, shoot a skeet. Uh, and so the Germans probably issued these to every base so they could practice skeet shooting during their off time. Again, I thought, um, why are they shooting a shotgun at skeet when really you, what you want to do is practice shooting a machine gun into a, an object that's moving. So uh, I'm not sure about the whole skeet story either. Uh, the more I did these videos, uh, I really came up with an answer that satisfies me. I've ne never been satisfied with any answer, but I like this one. You're free to disagree with me. If you go back and watch our videos, which is very important to do. Uh, we did one on Goring. 
and we talked about the cronyism that Goering would visit all the factories and he would take bribes or he would be given gifts in exchange for contracts. Okay, now if you look at Goering, you see that he was an avid hunter. We talked about that. He hunted a lot and his favorite weapon by far was the drilling. Uniquely German, we know he had a Krigoff drilling because uh, we have, we have uh, the records uh, on that one. We also know he had uh, uh, one of these that he hunted with, and he had several other drillings that he hunted with. Basically, every factory he visited would give him a presentation gun. If you watch that video, it goes into a lot more detail. Also, we talk about slave labor, that they paid bribes. We showed a little clip from Schindler's List and how he paid bribes to get, in order to get contracts. So now it's beginning to make sense. If Krigoff got uh, a, a bunch of favoritism, they got a huge contract with the Luftwaffe to deliver Lugers, even though they only delivered 1,000 a year when Mauser was putting out 100,000 a year. <laughs> you know, what, why was Krigoff given a, a uh, contract for 1,000 a year? Seems insignificant, except for the fact that they were hunting buddies and they did each other favors. So this is made by Sauer. Um, it's a commercial, it was a commercial gun from the 1930s. Well, I believe that Goering visited the factory. There's some quid pro quo that happened, and he said, hey, I'm going to order 4,000 of these and distribute them to my uh, Luftwaffe officers. I think the intent was almost like a gift to the officers. They didn't really, I mean, they had to say it had a military purpose in order to spend taxpayer money and say, oh, well, this is a survival weapon, when in fact it was, it was just intended as a gift. Um, you keep in mind, 40 and 41, the Luftwaffe ruled the skies. They had gone through Poland, Belgium, and France quick, more, more quickly than anyone had ever imagined. They have all this money coming in from the conquered nations. So they're rolling in dough. They're putting out these contracts, 4,000 of them to go to um, uh, Luftwaffe officers. They assumed that England would surrender. The war would be over. They'd, uh, they'd uh, sign a peace treaty. And they would own the skies over Europe. And everybody, all the officers would get a beautiful shotgun slash drilling. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. The irony is all three of these were brought home by U.S. vets who went over and, of course, we won the war and took all their booty home with us. Okay, let's go over the specifics of, uh, of the Luftwaffe drilling. Uh, very cool to look at as well, so uh, you're, you're going to enjoy this. So this is the original case. This one's a little, little rough. Um, you can't really read the outside. I have this other one. You can read it a little better. Um, but it says drilling uh, M30, Model 30, with mun munitions and equipment or uh, ammunition and accessories. So basically, this is the case that it came in. They're spray painted green. They're made of aluminum. Um, most of them are pretty well faded. Uh, you see this one case that has some initials on it. That has actually, I bought it from the family of the vet. And, oh, you can see his name on the front here, Alan Bella was the vet who brought it back and he put his initials on it. He did a very nice job, very professional job. Uh, also, speaking of cases, the one that was shot down, well, it was reportedly shot down. You can see the bulge here. Supposedly when the plane crashed, uh, it damaged it. And in fact, the stock has been repaired and you can see where the crack was and it was very, very nicely repaired. When we got it, we actually had it repaired because when we got it, it was com uh, the stock was completely broken. So this is the case itself. If you open the lid, you can see the list of the contents. And again, it, it lists a manual, which we see here. It has this uh, strap, which I've never seen one attached. I've always seen them folded in, in the bottom of the, of the case. It also has a, clean, a cleaning kit, and you look inside and you can see it is actually made for both the cleaning the shotgun barrels as well as the rifle barrels. It also came with ammunition. Here is actually the bullet. Again, this, is, <laughs> this would kill, kill any game animal that uh, Africa would have, but why in the world, if you were shot down, would you want to shoot a lion? I think I would just want to get back home. And you can see the caliber uh, that this is a box. It probably is, it's, it's from that period, but probably was not the ammunition that was issued. Um, but basically it's period correct. And then they also had some birdshot, which I mentioned. Uh, this is tw a 12 gauge birdshot. And then they also came with a box of uh, 12 gauge slug. So it, uh, you're fully prepared to go on a hunting trip. 
but not to survive behind enemy lines. I keep saying that. Um, the interesting thing about, this is the only time I've ever found this, but with this particular manual, I actually found the um, serial number to the gun, the uh, test target. Uh, it's from Sauer, so this was tested at the factory before it went to the Luftwaffe. Now, speaking of the Luftwaffe, let's take a look at uh, how the Luftwaffe marked it. First and foremost, the case itself made of aluminum. Right in the front there, you have an L2 proof, which is the Luftwaffe proof. If you look at the bottom of the barrel, you can see the L2 proof here. And then you also see the date. This is 1241. My eyes are not what they used to be. Uh, I have one that's 941, and then I have one from April of 42. So we know exactly when they were issued. The coolest part about this is on the barrel, you see that flying uh, Luftwaffe Eagle. Very unique to the Luftwaffe. That's on the barrel. Again, a survival weapon. You would think you want it light, lean and mean, parkerized to survive in the jungles. Uh, but instead we have, look at this case hardening, just phenomenal, phenomenal case hardening on these guns. And on the buttstock, you see that flying Luftwaffe Eagle. Now you can buy the commercial variation. Are these um, faked? Not easily. I, I, I don't think faking these has been a problem because the way this is roll stamped, it would be very hard to replicate. In other words, anybody could make a stamp and pound it on there, but the fact that it's rolled on there, it's just phenomenal workmanship. I'm not aware of these being faked. Uh, these can be very expensive. I've seen them go anywhere from, for the entire uh, kit, lift off a kit, 15,000 to 25,000. I think I saw a record price of about 30,000. We've offered these in the past and they're usually in the 15 to 20,000 range, depending on how many accessories. And also what I've done to get all these accessories in one place, I've kind of taken, uh, I've taken accessories from each of the different ones because every single one that I got was missing at least something. Some part of this is missing. So it's really, really hard to find a complete set of um, this survival weapon. So the, the main part of this that I think is a little unique is my conclusion on why they made the drilling. Other collectors will disagree with me, but if you go back and watch our videos, obviously I think they're really, really educational and, and helpful. If you watch the, the videos, particularly on the slave labor and the cronyism there, and then Goering with his, uh, with his cronyism, I feel pretty confident as to why these were ordered. By the way, I said 4,000 were old, ordered. Only about 2,400 were made, and then they stopped because I, I think people were saying, what are we supposed to do with these things? <laughs> they had no use on a, on a uh, lift off a base. So they only made uh, 2,400 of the 4,000, and, uh, and then they stopped. Of course, as the war began to turn, uh, you know that, that all that extra money they had for these little perks uh, it quickly dried up and they had their hands full uh, trying to defend their fatherland because the Americans were coming in to kick their butts. Thanks for watching and we'd love it if you would share with family and friends. If you're like me and you can't get enough of this stuff, click here to subscribe. That way we'll send you notification when we do something new or click one of these buttons for recommended videos.